Was grace that sought my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of worship here today. It's, it's good to see you. It's good to see the, the boys of the, the Boys Brigade and the officers. And uh, I know in the congregation we've got uh, family and friends. Uh, so you're very welcome. Hope you enjoy uh, being with us today for this uh, service. Just let me run through the announcements. Uh, there'll be a light lunch uh, after the service uh, in the big hall. So you just go down through the corridor down to the big hall. Uh, everyone's welcome to stay for that uh, after the service this morning. Uh, then we meet again this evening for worship at 6.30 uh, for prayer and then there's service of worship at 7 o'clock. And again, everyone's welcome to join us for that this evening. Uh, there's, there, there's another option tonight. Uh, our presbytery, they have uh, joint services occasionally and so there's going to be a joint service this evening in Rathcool Presbyterian Church at 6.30. So uh, people are welcome to go to that or just come here uh, as normal for our service. Uh, the Kirk session is going to meet tomorrow night at uh, 7.30, so a week uh, earlier than normal. Uh, so the elders, please bear that in mind. We're meeting tomorrow. Then the bright hour is on Tuesday as normal. The speaker this week is Billy Duff, and uh, all women in the congregation are invited to come along to that. The GB is having a, a fundraiser event for Fields of Life charity. Uh, their work involves providing fresh water for villages in Africa and providing education for everyone. Each section of the GB will be doing different activities uh, on Tuesday evening. So, uh, for example, they'll be doing skip-a-thon, dance-a-thon, cycle-a-thon. And we'd love members of the congregation to come down between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock on, on Tuesday to support the girls. Tea and coffee and tray bags will be provided. Uh, there's also a box at the back of the church uh, for anyone who'd like to make a donation, uh, which will go to Fields of Life charity. So that's uh, on behalf of the Girls' Brigade. I hope it's okay to mention the GB in front of the BB. Uh, but that's Tuesday. Uh, midweek Bible study and prayer meeting for all the congregation is on Wednesday at 7.45 as normal. And uh, today's the last day for uh, ordering uh, Bible reading notes or, or uh, uh, changing your, or your existing order for Bible reading notes, 22 points uh, for daily bread and encounter with God. So please speak to Joyce Anderson uh, today. Uh, next Sunday, the clocks change, uh, and so we've decided that we'll change the time of our evening service. So from next Sunday, our evening service will start at 6.30 uh, instead of 7. Uh, just a reminder about White Abbey Presbyterian Church, and they're having that special event about uh, science and faith on Thursday the 7th of November at 8 o'clock in White Abbey Presbyterian Church. You might want to put that in your diary. And then finally, it's with sorrow that I have to announce the death of one of our members, Mrs. Edith Forsyth who died on Tuesday and whose funeral took place on Friday morning. Uh, please remember to pray for her family, including uh, her daughter, Marion, and her son, Alistair. Well, we're here to worship God, and in the Psalms it says that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. So enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. And we're going to bless his name. We're going to praise God together by standing to sing, hear the call of the kingdom. <coughs>
Let's turn to God in prayer. Let's pray. And Almighty God, our Father, we uh, come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, and we come uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit, and we come to worship and adore you because you're the one true and living God, the most high God, who is uh, from everlasting to everlasting, and you do not change, and you're the one who made all things in the beginning, and you rule over all that you have made, sustaining and directing all things according to your most holy and perfect will and you're the one who's given us health and strength and daily food you've given us work and rest you've given us friends and family every good thing we enjoy here on earth has come down to us from you and you're the one who loved the world so much that you sent your son to be our savior and to give up his life on the cross to pay for all that we have done wrong And you're the one who sends your preachers into all the world to call men and women and boys and girls into the kingdom of your son where there's peace and forgiveness and a hope yet to come of everlasting life in your presence. And as well as sending out your preachers, you also send out your spirit into our lives to enable your people to believe. And so we worship and adore you and we give thanks to you uh, and uh, we praise you because there is indeed none like you. And we ask that you'll help us to worship you today. Will you help us to give thanks to you in our prayers and our praise? Will you help us to receive the truth of your word with faith and humility? We pray that your word will sink down deeply into all of our hearts and bear fruit in our lives. And we ask that you give us all a true and lasting faith in the Savior and everything we need to serve you this coming week. Heavenly Father, will you hear us? For we ask these things in our Savior's name. Amen. Uh, Corda Gibson is going to come now and read to us from the scriptures. It's uh, a reading from Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 1 to 16. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless who walk accordingly to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. You have laid down his precepts that are fully to be obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not put you to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with your upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees, do not utterly forsake me. How can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? I seek with you all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in your following statutes as one rejoices in great righteous. I meditate in your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Well, thank you, Carter. Uh, So we're reading there about some of the things that we're to do. We're to obey God. We're to walk in his ways. Now we're going to confess our sins and our shortcomings before the Lord and ask for his forgiveness for the ways that we've done what's wrong. Let's pray. And will you have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love and according to your abundant mercy, will you blot out our transgressions Will you wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from all our sin because we know our transgressions and uh, how from our childhood until this very hour we have sinned against your, uh, your laws and your commandments by our sinful thoughts and words and desires and deeds which are too many to count because we know that we're meant to be blameless and we're meant to walk according to your law but we confess that so often we go astray We know that we're meant to do nothing wrong, but we confess that indeed we do wrong all the time. We know that we're meant to obey your precepts fully, but we confess that we disobey your laws and thought and word and deed. We know that we're meant to keep our way pure by living according to your word, but we confess that we disregard your word and our way is not pure. 
We know we're meant to seek you with all of our heart, but we confess that we're so often self-seeking and selfish and we put ourselves first of all. And so we all know that we're sinners and we sin against you continually and every day we fall short of doing your will. We know I confess it. And we ask that you'll, not, that you'll uh, pardon us for the sake of Christ our Savior who came into the world as the Lamb of God who takes away our sin and who purifies us from all that is not right. And so for his sake, will you now wash us and cleanse us? Will you purify us from all that we have done wrong? For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, will you pardon us? And we pray, too, that you'll not treat us as our sins deserve. Instead, indeed, will you remove our sins and our guilt from us as far as the east is from the west. And for the sake of Christ the Savior, do not count our sins against us. But indeed, will you forgive us all that we have done wrong. And We pray, therefore, that you'll give to all who trust in your Son the joy of knowing that we have been pardoned and accepted through him. And we pray too that you'll fill us with your spirit so that we might be renewed throughout in your image and that we will become more and more willing and able to do your will here on earth. Heavenly Father, will you hear us and will you answer our prayers for we ask them in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And having confessed our sins before God, hear the good news where it says in the book of Acts to him, that's Jesus Christ, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And so thanks be to God for his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And let's uh, worship God. Let's stand to sing Jesus loves me. Jesus Christ was commissioned by uh, its Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, to go into all the world to make disciples of uh, all nations. And the Boys Brigade supports this work of the church by seeking to teach the boys the good news of Jesus Christ and to promote among the boys uh, through its uh, pr very program of activities those habits which tend towards a true Christian manliness. Uh, in other words, the Boys Brigade exists to help the, the boys to grow up in the Christian faith and to become faithful disciples of our great uh, Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And today, the, the leaders of the 120th Belfast Company have come to pledge themselves afresh to this work, and the boys have come to promise to be loyal uh, members of the company. 
But before we go any further, let's uh, pray to God. Let's ask His help. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank You for this company of the Boys Brigade and for the good influence it it has had on so many uh, boys and young men over the years. And we thank You for supplying the company with leaders who are well-equipped and willing to serve You in this way. Uh, We thank You too for the, the parents and others who have supported the work of the BB and for the the boys who make up the company. We ask now that you'll uh, help each one of them to remain faithful to the promises they're about to make. And we pray that through the work of this company, the kingdom of grace will advance and grow strong among us. And we ask these things in our Savior's name. Amen. So I'm going to read the uh, names of the officers who uh, will come forward and, and stand here in front of me. So first of all, our captain, Simon Houston. And then we've got uh, our leaders uh, in charge of the anchor boys and uh, the junior section. So it's Eva Coates. And Eva's not able to be here uh, today, uh, but uh, Philip Irwin is. So Eva's in charge of the anchor boys, uh, Philip in the... Uh, junior section. And then lieutenants, warrant officers, and helpers. So we've got David Bridal, Johnny Burnside, Philip Stewart, Chris Beck, James Watt, Michael Harvey, Simon Totten, and Sarah Bridal. Okay, very good. Good to see you. All looking very smart. Uh, Officers and helpers of the 120th Belfast Company of the Boys Brigade, this congregation has called you to the task of serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Boys Brigade and to work for the advancement of Christ's kingdom in the lives of the boys you're appointed to lead. Uh, Do you accept as from God this work laid upon you and do you promise to serve Him in furthering the object of the Boys Brigade, which is the advancement of Christ's kingdom among boys and the promotion of habits of obedience, reverence, discipline, self-respect, and all that tends towards a true Christian manliness. Do you? May the Lord Jesus, who has promised never to leave or to forsake His people, enable you to remain faithful to your promise and to work for the advancement of Christ's kingdom among these boys. I'll shake your hand. Thank you. Please take your seats. <clears throat> okay, now it's the turn of the, uh, the non-commissioned officers, the NCOs. So I'm going to just uh, read uh, your names and just stand where you are. Uh, 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 so just when you're here, you don't need to come forward. Okay, so we've got Lewis Gibney. Want to stand? Yeah. Uh, then Luke Houston, got Carter Gibson, uh, Carter Lachlan, Mackenzie Dugan, uh, Taylor Taggart, uh, Kai Gardner, and Reese Barr. Okay. So NCOs of the 120th Belfast Company of the Boys Brigade, your captain has appointed you to these ranks and in so doing has put his uh, trust in you that you'll be of service to the company and a good example to your fellow members. So do you promise, with God's help, to support your officers loyally, to carry out your duties cheerfully, and at all times to set a good example to the boys of this company? Do you? Great. May the Lord Jesus enable you to remain faithful to your promise and to be of service to the officers and boys of this company. Please be seated. So now the uh, boys at the front, uh, so I'm going to ask the the anchor boys to stand up first. Uh, So you ready? The ones in red, do you want to stand up? Okay. And then the junior section behind, do you want to stand up now? Okay, very good. So I'm going to ask you to promise to be a a loyal member of the, the boys' brigade and to support its activities. And that means you'll try your best to come along to BB on, on Thursday evenings and to do whatever other events are arranged during the year. And through all of these activities and uh, events, we hope that you'll, you'll grow up to be a true Christian man. So here's the question to you. Okay, I see you can see yourself on the screen. Okay, so we want to see uh, all the adults 
seeing you on the screen, uh, listening and answering this question, okay? Do you promise to be a loyal member of the Boys Brigade and to support the activities of the junior section and the anchor boys? So if you do, say, I do. Okay, well done. May the Lord grant you his gracious help so that you'll remain faithful to your promise today to be a loyal member of the Boys Brigade. Okay, do you want to take your seats again? Sit down, yeah. And then the company section, do you want to stand up now? So I think it's everybody who's left. Uh, do you want to stand now? And I'm going to ask you to make the same promise. So again, you're promising to uh, do your best to come along to the BB on Thursdays and uh, any other event, to any other events that are organized. And again, our hope is and our prayer that you'll grow up to become true Christian men. So do you promise to be a loyal member of the Boys Brigade and to support the activities of this company? Do you? May God grant you his gracious help so that you will remain faithful uh, to your promise today to be a loyal member of the Boys Brigade. So do you want to sit down as well? Thanks very much. Let's uh, pray to God again. And Heavenly Father, we ask that your blessing will be upon the, the officers, the helpers, the NCOs, uh, the lieutenants, uh, or the boys of the, the 120th Belfast Company of the Boys Brigade. And we ask that this year will be a happy and a successful one for them. Now, may they all enjoy their time together, and may they support and encourage one another. And we pray that they'll discover true and lasting friendships. Will you enable them to remain faithful to the promises they've made today? And we pray that the officers will have the joy of seeing these boys growing into fine Christian men who will endeavor to find ways to serve you in the world. We pray for your blessing on those who have, uh, 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 who have served in, the, uh, sur in the, the Boys' Brigade in the past. And uh, we ask, Lord God, that you'll continue to watch over them at all times. And we pray, Lord God, that you'll help all of the boys, all of the officers, uh, everyone connected indeed to this congregation to honor you in all that we do each day. And we pray, Lord God, that all of us, including the boys in the BB and the officers, that all of us will be faithful to Christ our King and will seek to serve him every day. And we ask all of these things in our Savior's name. Amen. Well, that's the enrollment over, but we're going to have the, I think it's the anchor boys in the junior section. They're going to come and do a memory verse for us now, okay?
thank you. Um, we're going to praise God together. We're going to stand and sing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun. read uh, again from the scriptures, um, from the Bible, just at the last book of the Bible, and almost at the end of the, the Bible, just a few verses. This is God's Word. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, 
beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Amen. We thank God for his word. Okay, well, it's good to have all the boys and girls, uh, no, boys and girls, but it's good, there are girls here in the congregation. It's good having you. Yes, you are very welcome, but it's good to have all the boys here from the Boys Brigade, uh, the company. Uh, so you've got the Boys Junior section, uh, the company section. So you're all looking very well, uh, very smart. I just want to speak to you for a, a wee bit about, uh, well, two, two people from the Bible, uh, two men. <coughs> On uh, this side, uh, the man with the spear, his name is Naaman. And uh, then the other guy who's looking a wee bit cross, uh, his name is Gehazi. Gehazi, so Naaman and uh, Gehazi. Uh, so we're going to think about them today and uh, a story about them. And uh, so who was Naaman? Well, Naaman, uh, he, he, was, he was a soldier. You can probably tell that because he's got a spear and he's got a shield and uh, he's got a, a armor on. But he wasn't just a soldier. Uh, he, in fact, he was, the, he was the captain, the commander of the army. He was the commander of the army of the king of uh, Aram. That was a, a land in the Bible. And uh, so, being a commander, he was a very important person. Uh, so, if he gave an order, people had to do it. And, uh, but he was also a very, uh, he was a very successful commander. He had won lots of battles. So, everybody used to look up to him. And if you saw him walking down the street, you know, all the wee boys would look up at him and say, I'd love to be like him, uh, because he was such a great soldier and commander. But uh, there was one problem. So he was a very successful soldier. He'd won lots of battles. He was a commander. Everybody looked up to him. But there was this one problem, because uh, he had this skin disease called leprosy, which in those days was a very serious illness. And there was no cure. It would just get worse and worse over time. So he was this really very successful, popular man. And yet, he had this problem. And it was a massive problem. He had this skin disease, which was just going to get worse and worse. Well, uh, Naaman's wife, she had a little slave girl. And so that's a, the wee girl there holding the brush. She had a slave girl, and she was from the land of Israel, which was where God's people lived in those days. And so, at some point, you know, they raided Israel, and they captured her, and they made her the slave. And although she was a slave, uh, she, she loved Naaman and his wife, and uh, she was sorry to see Naaman with the skin disease, and she wanted to help him. And so, she went to uh, Naaman's wife one, one day and said, listen, you should tell your husband about Elisha. Now, Elisha, he was a, a prophet uh, for God's people. So, he lived in the land of Israel, and uh, he was like a preacher. So, he would have preached God's Word, but also he was able to do all these miracles. And when you read the Bible, you hear about some of the wonderful things he did. In fact, one of the things he did was there was a wee boy who was once sick, and he died, and Elisha brought him to life again. God was working through him. And this wee girl must have known about him, and said to Naaman's wife, your husband should go and see Elisha, because Elisha will be able to make him well. He can do all these wonderful things. I'm sure Elisha would be able to make Naaman better again. And uh, the wife listened to the wee slave girl, and she told Naaman, and Naaman went and told his king. And uh, his king said, yes, of course, you should go and uh, see Elisha. You have my permission to go. And so, the king of uh, Aram sent Naaman and his men to go and find Elisha. But they said, don't go to Elisha. Go, first of all, to the king of Israel and ask him first. And so, there he was. He sent off in his horse and chariots, all his men with him. And you'll see in the back of his chariot, he's got bags. It's bags of money and it's bags of clothes to give as a gift to say, thank you for curing Naaman of his leprosy. So, they went off as fast as possible and as I say, before going to see Elisha, they went to see the king of Israel to ask his permission. And uh, the king of Aram had given Naaman a letter to give to the king of Israel. 
And uh, the king of Israel, there he is there, he's reading the letter, and the letter said, I have sent you Naaman, my servant, so that you can cure him of his leprosy. And whenever the king heard that and read that, he started getting really worried. So, well, what, what's, what's he doing sending Naaman to me? I'm not able to cure him of his leprosy. That's not the sort of thing I'm going to do. What's he doing? Is he trying to pick a fight with me? Is he trying to ask me to do something I can't do? And then is he going to come and attack me? So he was really worried about it. And all of Israel heard about what had happened, and they started talking about it. And one person was telling their neighbor, and uh, they passed the message on. And eventually, the message got down to Elisha. And he heard about it, and he sent a messenger to the king. He said, listen, I'll take care of it. Send Naaman to me. I'll sort it out. Don't worry about it. And so uh, the king of Israel sent Naaman to go and find Elisha at his house. And soon, uh, Naaman and all his men, they uh, gathered outside Elisha's house. Now, remember, when, when Naaman was back home, he was an important man. He was a commander. People always did what he said. People looked up to him. They admired him. And so he was kind of expecting that whenever he arrived at Elisha's house, that Elisha would come out and bow down before him. And he kind of thought, well, you know, he kind of thought, I know what prophets do. He'll probably pray to his God. He'll probably be wave his hands over me. And that's what he'll do. But uh, he didn't come out. And so he kind of got, you know, annoyed about this. Why isn't he coming out? Why isn't he treating me as an important person? And in fact, uh, all Elisha did was he sent a messenger out, one of his servants. In fact, it was Gehazi. We're going to hear about him later. And uh, the message was, go and wash yourself seven times in the River Jordan. And whenever uh, he heard that, well, he got even angrier, really, really angry, because he thought, I'm an important person. He should have come himself. Instead of sending his messenger, he should have prayed to his God and waved his hands over me. And uh, why does he want me to go and wash in the Jordan River? It's a smelly old river. He says, there are far better rivers. I could go and wash in them. Why in the Jordan River? It's a smelly river. I don't want to do that. And he was so cross that he says, enough of this, I'm going to go home. And so he got in his chariot and he started heading, whoops, yeah, oh, he started heading home, so mad. Well, his servants with him, his men with him, they had more sense and they tried to calm him down. And they, they, they rode up to him and said, listen, listen, if Elisha had asked you to do something difficult, you know, you would have done it, wouldn't you? But he's asked you to do something simple. You know, just go and wash seven times in the Jordan River. You could do that. So it's a simple thing to do. It's easy. Why don't you do it? give it a try? Go and do it. And uh, Naaman listened to his, uh, his men, fortunately. He calmed down a bit and he thought, okay, yes, I'll give it a go. He says, go and wash in the Jordan River. I'll go and do that. And so he turned his chariot around and he and his men went down to the Jordan River and uh, he stripped off, and he went into the water. He ducked down into the water, came back up. But no, the leprosy was still there. So he went down a second time, came up. The leprosy was still there in his skin. He could still see it. He went down a third time, came up, still there. Went down a fourth time, came up, still there. Went down a fifth time, came up, still there. Went down a sixth time, came up, it was still there. And he was wondering, is it going to work? And his men, they were watching, they were counting. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Would it work now in the seventh time? They were all wondering, waiting, bated breath. What's going to happen? He ducked down the seventh time, and when he came up, fantastic. The leprosy had gone. It had gone. It just vanished that seventh time. He was so happy. His men were happy as well because, do you remember, he thought there was no cure, and God had cured him. It wasn't Elisha. It was God. He was so happy. And so he got all his clothes back on and he and his men headed back to see Elisha to say, thank you, this is fantastic. Well done for curing me. And he said to Elisha, now I know that there's only one God and uh, it's the God of Israel. He said, every other God that the other nations worship, it's not, they're not real. But your God, he's the real thing. He's the one true and living God. And he was so happy, he wanted to give Elisha do you remember the bags of money and the bags of clothes? He wanted to give them those as a present to say thank you. But Elisha said, no, 
I'm not going to take anything from you at all. This is a free gift to you. You're cure. It's a free gift. I'm not going to take anything from you. And uh, he said to uh, Naaman, he says, you know, go in peace. You know, God has made you well. Go in peace. Now, before we go on with the story, I want to, uh, I want you to think about this. There was Naaman. So, this, this successful commander, this powerful, he's this, this mighty soldier, everybody looked up to him, but he had this one problem that, that made his life miserable. And so, this story of how God cured him, it tells us how God, well, He loves us, and He wants to, he wants to fix the world, and He wants to take away all the things that make us miserable and sad. You see, when God made the world at the beginning, everything was perfect. So, there was no leprosy, there was no sickness, there was no crying, there was no pain. There was nothing to upset us in the beginning. It was a perfect world. But then the world all went wrong, and now there are all kinds of things that make us cry and make us unhappy and sad, and many things that we think about. You know, my life would be so much better if it wasn't for, for this thing. So, for uh, Naaman, it was his leprosy he would have thought, my life would be so much better if it wasn't for this leprosy. And for everybody else, it's the same thing. Everybody here today thinks that. My life would be so much better if it wasn't for this, this thing, this thing that upsets me, that makes me sad, that makes me worried. I wish God would take it away from me or someone would take it away from me. And the story of how God cured Naaman shows us, well, God is willing to take it away from us. He's able to take away all the things that make us miserable and sad, and He wants us to be happy. When God came to earth, because Jesus is God, so when God came to earth, He went around doing good to all kinds of people. So, there are all kinds of people who were sick, and God healed them. There are people who couldn't walk, and, God, and, and Jesus made them as, uh, walk again. God was here on the earth, and He was he make, making people happy again by helping them. And he says that one day he's going to come back one day, and we were just reading about it. He's going to come back one day, and when he comes back one day, he's going to remake the world, and it's going to be again a perfect place. There's, no, there's, no, there's going to be no more sorrow or sadness, nothing to make us cry, nothing will worry us. We'll just, it'll just be perfect for us, and we'll be happy all of the time. That's what the Lord Jesus is, and God promises us. If we believe in Him, we have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ believe that He's our Savior, and trust Him, and, and live our lives for Him. That's what He's going to do for everybody one day who believes in Him. He's going to make everything right. And right now, He can help us with the things that worry us right now. He can give us the help and comfort us and strength that we need. But then one day, He's going to come back, and He's going to make everything perfect for us yet again. But that's not the end of the story, because there's the other guy, Gehazi, I wanted to tell you about. He was Elisha's servant, and whenever he saw uh, Naaman drive off with the bags of money and the bags of clothes, he was annoyed because he thought, well, I'd like to have some of that money and some of those clothes for myself. And here's Elisha sent him away without taking any of it. So he decided that he would chase after Naaman on his donkey, and he went as fast as he could, and eventually Naaman spotted him coming, and Naaman stopped, and the two of them met, and uh, Gehazi made up the story. If so he lied, and he said to Naaman, oh, some visitors have come, and Elisha wants to give them some money and some coats, so can we have some of your money and some of your coats, some of your clothes, and I'll give, I'll give those to the, to the visitors. But he was lying because he wanted to keep it for himself. And uh, Naaman was taken in. He was fooled. He says, yes, of course, by all means, here, take it. And he gave him what he wanted. In fact, he gave him more than he wanted. And Gehazi sort of packed it into his, onto his donkey, and he headed home. And when he got home, well, he hid it. He hid the money, he hid the clothes, and he would use it one day uh, for himself. He was going to keep it all for himself. Well, he thought he got away from it, with it. But then when he went to see uh, Elisha, Elisha said, where have you been? And he's, again, he lied. He says, well, I haven't been anywhere. I've just been here. And Elisha knew that he was lying. Elisha knew what he had done and how he had taken the money and the clothes that didn't belong to him, so he'd stolen it. And uh, Elisha was uh, angry with him, but more than that, God was angry with him. And so, the leprosy that used to be on Naaman now came on uh, Gehazi. He looked at his skin covered in leprosy. God was punishing him for 
what he had done wrong. And you see, boys and girls and everyone else, often things make us sad, but often we do things that are wrong, just like Gehazi. Gehazi was a sinner. He was doing wrong. He was lying. He was taking what didn't belong to him. And we're all the same. We all do things that we're, we know aren't right. Every day we do things that we know are wrong, and yet we still do them. And it shows us that we're sinners and we disobey God all of the time. And we need to be saved from our sin and our guilt because it makes us guilty before God. And God's then angry with us and, he, and we should be punished. But God loves us and he doesn't want to punish us. And so he sent his son, Jesus, into the world to take the blame for all that we have done wrong. So again, if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we trust in him as our savior, he washes away our guilt. He forgives us for all that we have done wrong. He, uh, he, he forgives us for all the bad things that you've done. And then not only does he forgive you, but he promises you then eternal life in this new and better world to come where no one will be sad, no one will be unhappy, no one will cry. There'll be no more sickness, no more sorrow, but just perfect peace and rest forever. And so this is the wonder of the gospel message. This is for everyone that if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he washes away our guilt, all that we've done wrong, because Jesus took the blame for us, and he promises us eternal life in this new and better world where everything will be perfect for us. We'll be happy forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the, the good news of the gospel, uh, because we know, Lord God, that our life here on earth is filled with sad things, things that make us miserable, and we know, Lord God, that every day we do things that are wrong, and so we feel bad about ourselves. But we thank you that you sent your Son into the world to take the blame for all that we have done wrong, and that by believing in Him, we receive forgiveness from you. And we thank you, too, for the promise that one day the Lord Jesus is coming again, and when He comes, He'll give all who trust in Him uh, everlasting life in that new and better world where there'll be, there'll be nothing to make us sad or unhappy, but we'll enjoy perfect peace and rest forever. And we thank you that even now He helps us with all the things that make us sad even today. And so will you help us all from the youngest to the oldest to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to trust in Him for the forgiveness that we need, and help us, Lord God, to live our lives not for ourselves, but for Him, and we ask it in His name. <coughs> Amen. Well, thanks for listening so well. Um, we're going to stand to sing, uh, Will Your Anchor Hold? That's the BB hymn. And then uh, we're going to sing the, the Vesper afterwards, aren't we? Johnny, yes, we're going to sing the Vesper after that. Uh, and then we'll stay standing, and I'm going to uh, give thanks for the food that we're going to receive uh, if we stay for lunch. But let's stand to sing, uh, Will Your Anchor Hold?
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your goodness and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the food we're about to receive, whether it's here or at home, and we thank you for those who have prepared it for us. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.